Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make, you guessed it, a farm. But a farm unlike any other. Because in this farm we're going to farm not only items but also the regeneration effect. And we're going to do that by harvesting the power of axolotls. If you followed this channel for a while, you might remember I did something similar soon after the release of version 1.17 which added the axolotl to the game. Since then, there have been some modifications and the original video I released back then has now been consistently nerfed, so this is an update and an upgrade to that. First and foremost, let's review the mechanics of axolotl-based regeneration and see how we can exploit them. Axolotls, such as this little guy here, can share their regeneration ability with players who help them kill certain aquatic mobs. These mobs are defined in the axolotl entity JSON file and are as follows. Squid, cod, salmon, tropical fish, tadpole, drowned, guardian and guardian elder. In order for the kill to register, an axolotl must be within 8 blocks of one of these mobs and able to see it. The mob must also have its feet inside of water. For example, let's see how it works with a drowned. Look closely at the axolotl here. See how it moves its head every time I hit the drowned? It means it is detecting the mob and in attack mode. So if I kill this drowned now, I should get a few seconds of the regeneration effect. As so. Now, the interesting part is that the effect can be stacked. If I kill, say, four drowns in a row, I will get added regeneration for all of them. I didn't get regeneration here because the drown didn't have its feet inside of water. But if I kill this one... I get regeneration. And I got 8 seconds total of regeneration effect. But there's more. The effect also stacks up depending on the number of axolotls targeting the mob. Let's try with 10 and see how it compares with just one. Here I got 8 seconds with just one round. The number of seconds of regeneration effect that you get seems to be random. Here I got 14. But this is thanks to the fact I have 10 axolotls here looking at the mobs. So now imagine killing mobs at an industrial scale with a lot of axolotls watching at the same time. The effect would quickly add up, and if done properly, we would also get a lot of items as a bonus. But how are we going to do that? Well, very simply, with a trident killer. For the sake of clarity, we're going to build the TK separately now in a test world, so that you can see exactly how it is made and how it works. So let's kill off these axolotls first and start building our TK. The TK is very simple. It is based off my mob blender with added axolotls 
which have an open line of sight towards the mobs. So what else do I need? I need an observer. And that should be it, I guess. The first thing is to create the platform from which we will gather the items with a hopper minecart. Let's make it five by five. Now we need to add pistons. Like so. Now, in front of our pistons, we need to place a temporary block. Let's use slime. Now, on top of the temporary block, let's place trapdoors. And then on top of the pistons, open trapdoors. This is where we're going to put the axle tools. There. Now we can safely remove the temporary block. And replace them with the platform on which we are going to throw the tridents. It must be made in an L shape. So we have three blocks here, three blocks here, nine blocks in the middle, no blocks here and no blocks here. Now Let's add a few more trapdoors like so. And close off the corners. Actually, we don't need block, a block here, we need a block one block above. Here. Now, above the pistons, we'll place a few more blocks, like so. So two blocks here and here along with blocks around the pistons. Now we're going to use a fence post. Here, 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 and here. Now we need to waterlog the trapdoors here. Now that this is done, we can close off 
the back here. Now we also need to waterlog these blocks here. But it's very important to not waterlog these trapdoors here. Only the ones in the middle section. Now we can place our axolotls. Let's place 10 by cell. Now that this is done, we can wire our Trident Killer. And I'm using glass here, but of course you could use any solid block as well, as a replacement. Observer here, 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 and here. And then redstone. Okay, now we need a means to stop the TK. Now let's throw the tridents. Here. And let's make a roof so that we can test it with drowns without them burning. There. Now let's give it a test. See, with just two drowns, I already got two and a half minutes of regeneration effect. Imagine how it will stack once the farm is complete. So now that we have our TK, let's discuss how and where to build the farm. In order to maximize the number of mobs detected by our axolotls, we will want to make the farm somewhere with a large variety of them. So of course, an ocean would be ideal. Here, We'll make it in a warm ocean biome to get tropical fish, but you could make it in a regular or cold ocean, or even in a frozen one for added simplicity of build. The advantage of the ocean is that the mob density caps are high and we can harvest fish, squid and drowned all within the same perimeter. Our first step is to find a suitable location. We want our farm to be at the same level as the ocean surface. So y equals 62. We will also need to AFK at least 23 blocks above that. And in this case, we'll AFK at y equals 87. We don't want rounds to spawn on the ocean floor. So we'll need the ocean floor to be outside of the R44 spawning sphere. Hence, we need an ocean floor that is at its highest point at Y equals 42. 
So let's see here what we have. This is perfect for what we need. This perimeter here will do fine. Once we've found the perfect location, what we need to do is create a perimeter that is 21 by 21 by 15. And here, and that is the actual hardest part of making this farm. Now we've done that, we'll add a layer of soul sand three blocks under the surface, topped with a layer of your temporary block of choice. This and for the block, temporary block, we'll use slime. Like this here is our first layer, and then slime on top of it. And here it's done. As you can see, I've also added water flows on top of the slime and open fence gates at the same level as our temporary slide. Now the next step, ah, before the next step uh, I, I have to explain to you how to create these water flows. It's a very simple system that was devised by Rufus Atticus in an old video and it's basically you just place two blocks here, here, here and here in each corner and then water source blocks on every other block of the line. Then you just remove these two blocks and you have one high perfectly flowing water that leads mobs to the center. Now we have to remove these slime blocks and replace them with water bubble columns. Here, it's done. Now the next part is the meaty part, the TK. We can start building it immediately. Now that the TK is done, we need to create a sorting system here to sort the items. that we'll use a very basic design sorting design that you probably already know very well here we're almost done now we need to add a roof immediately above our flowing water here this is very important, because if there is no roof, drowns will be able to throw tridents, which will land in the TK, making the kills instead of your own tridents and tanking the farm's rates. Here. For the last part, we have to create a light blocking roof where we can AFK. For that, we will use leaves. We also need to make a column we can climb to the top of in order to clear the cap from any mobs we might have spawned while on our way to the farm. And here we are done. So here is our column that will allow us to climb up to the AFK point but also to clear the cap from all the mobs that have spawned. And in the center here, we have our AFK point, where we can watch the mobs spawning and getting killed. 
And now everything's done. The farm is ready to be used. In this specific configuration, we are using 40 axolotls. Let's go down and see the farm from the inside. Let's start it up. Let's clear the effect that I have right now. And restart mob spawning. Here come our first cod. And look at how fast this stacks up. As for the items, you can expect over 4000 items per hour, mostly bones, cod and tropical fish, along with about 15 tridents, a stack of copper and a couple of stacks of ink. You will also get a few Nautilus shells as well, of course. All the Nautilus shells not being affected by the looting effect, their numbers are always small. And in the amount of time it took me to say this, look at that, we already have over 15 minutes of regen. Before we finish the video, there are two important things I still need to tell you. The first is that you must, and I insist you must, absolutely turn off the TK between AFKing sessions. The TK is not relog friendly, and if you forget to turn it off before you log off, the tridents will glitch through the floor upon relogging. In case that happens, here is how you can easily re-throw them. Simply break the middle block here and aim at the spots here, 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 and here. Now, the second thing that I need to tell you is that once you have your regen stacked up, you must avoid regen beacons like a plague. If you enter the perimeter of a regen beacon, the beacon's regen will reset all the regen you have built up and you'll have to start all over again. And that's it, I guess we can wrap it up for today. I hope you liked the video and if you have comments or questions, feel free to hit the comment section. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again in the next one.